When you think about van life, what do you picture? That Instagram picture with the back of the van open by a lake or an ocean and the beautiful sun? Or do you think about the rain and the snow that some may not like? But if you look deep and you look close, that rain can be very peaceful. That rain can be very relaxing. It can be just as beautiful as the sun on a bright sunny day. The sounds that that rain makes on the water can just relax you. Today, we are lucky enough to talk to a van lifer and we're gonna discuss and find out her story on why she does it, if she has fears, and most of all, the amazing lifestyle that it beholds. You never know what you'll come across in van life. The scenery, the places you can visit, and the amazing surprises. If you look into the water, you'll see a sea otter splashing around, just enjoying life that you could possibly do if van life is something you've been thinking about. Guys, far in the distance, way across the bay, I think I see something that I recognize. A big blue van. Let's go see if she's in. On the drive over there, all I keep thinking about is the questions so many have, and I have the opportunity to get some of those answers. How safe is it? Do you feel alone? Why would you choose van life over a sticks and bricks? And is it really a true lifestyle? Thank you very much for inviting me to your lovely home on wheels. Thank you. Yes. We have talked over the last little while and seen you out and about. And no, I just didn't come knocking on your door unannounced. You don't do that. Don't knock on people's door unannounced. Um, so what I'd really like to do is a lot of people don't understand van life to begin with. A lot of people think you're forced into van life. A lot of people think it's unsafe and bad things can happen to you and all that type of stuff. So if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions mm -hmm. on your experiences and things like that. Mm -hmm. So the very first thing is why van life? <laughs> well, having been in the van for two and a half years at this point, it's because I love it. I have no intentions of ever, there's no thought in my mind of ever going back to sticks and bricks at this point. But we can backtrack and go back to when I first started doing the research and the buying of the van and the was, build out. And I was just yeah. going to say, you must have done a lot of research before yeah. jumping into it. Oh, yeah. Uh, that year, probably more than a year of actually finding Big Blue. I, my, probably my entertainment, not probably, it was. It was my entertainment for more than a year, watching YouTube videos. I would do that for hours a day. <laughs> I do that hours a day already. I, I, yeah, yeah, you're right. I still do. What, am I, <laughs> what can I say? But but that research and I had my book out, all my notes and, you know, everything. So that was basically my life for a year, well, more than a year before. So saying yeah. that, watching all the YouTube videos and the, reading the books and stuff like that, do you really think that that prepared you for what you were about to do? Um, I think it did. Um, I think it did, mainly it did, because a lot of the videos at that point, and it was like, this is three and a half years ago now, right? Um, well, a lot of what I was watching was videos from the States, from the desert, like yes. Bob Wells and whatnot. And upon moving into the van and during the build out, I realized, 
wait a minute. This isn't the desert. This is Vancouver Island. It's different. It's a little wet. Yeah, so I've had to uh, adjust things. Um, especially once I've moved into the van. I had to kind of revamp some thoughts about it. And it's not so much about the van life itself, about the build out and um, you know, parking spaces and all that stuff. It, this is in the desert where there's tons and tons of parking spaces. So I'm glad you brought yeah. that up because yeah. parking or where you're gonna stay for the night mm -hmm. is a big consideration, especially since the majority of your time, right at this point in time because of what's going on in the world, mm -hmm. you spend a lot of time on the island. So do you ever have a problem or tough time trying to find safe places to park at night? No. No? Never. Um, I'm mainly in this area where we are right now. Yeah. Not sure if we should mention names or not. Probably not. <laughs> um, main, and, and especially in the winter time around in this area. Yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, other people from other parts of the Canada come here for the winter. <laughs> yes. So, so this is the best place to be in the winter, right? Um, but in the summer, of course, I go further afield. To avoid the snow, you come here in Canada, or try to avoid. And the to snow. avoid the really below freezing weather too. Yeah. Even though in the last few days we've had, it's been below zero. So I've had ice on my van the last two mornings. Yeah, it was chilly this morning yeah. too. Very chilly this had morning. Had my heater on overnight, but last two morning nights. So, you seem not to have a problem finding a spot, and this has always been a question I've asked because you know it's something that, you know, is kind of something that we're kind of looking at, Marcy and myself as well. Even though we do do the RV stuff right now and build outs and stuff like that and the DIY but it's the van it's the freedom of having a van and not having to worry about a big place to park mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you saying you're not you find it pretty easy to find a place to park well I'm two and a half years into it remember in this area so I found my spots <laughs> you got to memorize a check off it's, it's in the beginning that um, it was a little bit scary right in the beginning um, part of the Part of what was what was uh, really nice about this, like moving into the van in this area, is that my son actually lived in this van two for a year, a little over a year, two years before I bought the van. Nice. So he pointed out different places around the area. Oh, so you had the heads up already? I had some heads up, a little <laughs> bit of heads up. Yes. You were brand spanking new. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so have you ever felt? unsafe at any time being a solo female living in a van I have to say I've never have you never gotten that knock on the door get out of here or, hey what oh, well, are you I've doing had here the knock, I've, no never 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 I've had what was it well I could tell the story of three weeks into my van life of getting the, the cop I mean he didn't knock on the door it was the morning I could see him driving up <laughs> But behind me but, but that was because someone phoned me in ah so i chatted with him right i had to assure him over and over again that this van would start and it's not just abandoned here kind <laughs> of thing that's awesome so you've yeah. been really lucky actually and in a way we're we were both kind of lucky with the area that it is a pretty safe area and there are a lot of places like you said you've kind of knew you knew people that have already been there and stuff like that mm -hmm. so I'll ask you, people always want to know, if you had to restart van life, what would you change? I would say nothing, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Do you love it I that much? I would change anything. I mean, there's a few little tweakings in the van, which we'll get into when doing the van tour. I'll yeah. talk to you about, especially in this area, this area right here has changed. This is my third change right now. I know I think last Again. time I saw it it was a little different too. So, yeah. so it's gone through through evolutions this one area the rest of it hasn't changed. So what do you what is if you had to point out if somebody said to you what drives you what gets you excited about van life and you could only say one thing what would that be? My house is wherever I go. That's an awesome answer. <laughs> no matter where you are it's your home. home. Yeah. And you always have your home with you. Totally. And I think that's one of the most exciting parts is it doesn't matter where you go, you're home. 
yeah it's it, it's disconcerting like travel like getting into other people uh, it's disconcerting tra driving with other people like in the passenger seat where I have to leave my van behind like oh my gosh what I have to bring with me oh okay I need this and I need this and I need this <laughs> don't have to do that anymore <laughs> now it's always here <laughs> for some of you that have never seen her awesome channel make sure you check it out because in this video I am gonna leave the link in the bottom in the comments but I will say that you this isn't your first van either that you've done this is my first van, but I've done a second van. Yeah, so you've yes. got another van. Right now it's for sale. Yes, it is for sale. <laughs> um, and you built Safari. Safari, yes. Which is a cool little van that you did as well. Mm -hmm. So I know this isn't about Safari, but I did have to mention it because it shows that you don't need to have a big space, right? It is whatever you want. Yeah. Because yeah. not a lot of people can afford a nice high top van yeah yeah with the extra yeah, room yeah right I I I mean this is my home home yeah my safari was more my travel van uh, yeah because it is smaller I mean it, you know a little cheaper on fuel I'm imagining yeah. too. a lot cheaper on a fuel it was fabulous like double the gas mileage than this whole thing <laughs> that's yeah. awesome yeah so if you could give one piece of advice or encouragement mm -hmm. to somebody that's thinking about starting van life or the other question is keep sitting on the fence should i do it should i not what would you say to that person i never ever had doubts about living this lifestyle so it was never your... it never even dawned, never even entered my mind that this wouldn't work so you just went in and jumped right into I it. I just jumped right into it. I know a lot of people say, well, go live in your van for a bit, like put in a mattress and, you know, a little, you know, whatever, and go live in it for a month or two weeks or whatever it is and just feel it out to see. And I would actually say, now that I'm thinking about the answer to that question, if somebody's on the fence, that's probably is a good idea to do that. Try it first. Try it first. Because what have But you have to try it more than... A couple of weeks you have to try it probably for at least a month maybe a couple of months because those first little while you're still you're still in honeymoon phase <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you have to be in the van for a few months to really really know to get the feel of it and know that this is right for you or not so you see that all the time on YouTube where some people say hey just throw a mattress in there throw a cook stove in there and go and figure out what you need or if this is gonna be anything that you want mm-hmm it's awesome. You've managed to do this for quite a while. Yep, May 1st, 2019, 19, 20, 21. Yep. All by yourself. All by myself. On the road, nothing bad's happened to you. No horror stories, no nothing. Some people say that it's really scary out there, the whole nine yards, and you just enjoy it. I enjoy it. I In those first couple of months, of course, it's always that little bit of like, you're on edge more in the beginning, right? Even in my little area that I was in. Yeah. You're always a bit more on edge, always peeking out the windows, whatever that noise, what's that noise? Um, stuff like that. So as time goes on, it gets more and more comfortable. The ears stay o still stay, o stay open, pardon me, but don't even bother. If, it, if it's not um, affecting me personally, my van outside my van I'm, I'm just ignoring whatever's going on out there so that brings up another really good question there's a lot of people that are doing the van life or living in a van I found that some people either go to bed really really early and get up <laughs> really really early and some people go to bed late and get up early so some people are doing it so they're not seen if they're in industrial areas or stuff like that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and some people mm -hmm. go to bed early because they feel it's safer to go to bed early and wake up early than be in the middle of some place mm -hmm. at four o'clock in the morning. What do you prefer for yourself? It depends on where I'm parked. It really does. Um, some places I feel totally comfortable just hanging out there in the morning. And I love those places actually. Yeah. And then other places, um, it's not about feeling safe. It's more about the neighborhood that I might be in. I feel like I shouldn't be just kind of hanging out there because the neighborhood. So sometimes you feel like 
You might be a bother in the neighborhood, you'll, you'll, for or, lack of a better word. Not necessarily a bother, but I don't want to overstay my welcome kind right. of thing. Right. Because I do have some spots where I absolutely love being in them, but I don't necessarily hang out there in the morning because I don't want to, like you said, overstay my welcome and then the neighbors start talking or whatever. Is there anything that you want to add so people can understand that this isn't always a necessity of why people do this? This is a lifestyle and a choice. Good words. This is a lifestyle and a choice. And it was for me. Totally. That's awesome. I didn't have to move out of my house that I was in. We loved living there. But I just wanted to do this. And it, it, I'll back up a little bit. Over the, over as I was re approaching a retirement age... And I don't mind telling you my age. I'm 65. I turned 65 in June. And awesome. I, and I did. And I retired in September. And but over the like the 10 years or so prior to that, I always thought I want to do something different in my retirement. I just don't want to be sitting at a home doing sitting nothing at a house in a rocking home chair. Doing nothing. And I've always wanted to travel. And so I've never. I'm totally untraveled as far as seeing the world is concerned. And that was always kind of a, um, what's the word for it? A sadness <laughs> that I couldn't do that. Or I, I didn't do that, I should say. So I wanted to have more in my life than just being stuck in one spot during my retirement. So is there at all a, how do I put this? Is there ever a time, like right now, it's, People always think it's like Instagram. You open up the back doors and you're laying in the sun with a great view of the ocean or the lake and or ski hills or this or that. And it's rainy and gloomy today. It's rainy and gloomy. And anytime you open the doors, anything on the door gets soaking wet. Is there ever a time where you're like, I just want to go somewhere else and get out of the rain, especially here in the wintertime? I've had this, this thought for the last couple of months, to be honest with you. I, um, I, I didn't know, I didn't, I knew I wasn't going to leave Canada this fall. That wasn't in the cards for this time. But, but part of me is thinking, anticipating the winter, because this, this will, I'm coming into my third winter. And I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be rainy and it's, it's so much work. <laughs> and, and it's the, it's a condensation that's so much work because you have to be on top of that, right? Or else it'll, you can start growing mold and there's just a lot to it. And part of me is like, maybe go to Southern BC in November before it gets super cold there. Just because I love it. I went there the summer before in my safari. It's so beautiful. But then I was thinking now it's January that all this rain and gloom and whatnot starts getting to me, right? <laughs> that just is. When the sun's gone for a long time, it does yeah. seem really like a long gloom. So winter. I should probably wait until January and then decide where, if I want to head east, like off the west coast. <laughs> so it'll be, it'll be very hot, cold there and snowy and stuff, but it won't be raining. No. So when you're traveling, I know some people always make sure that they stay in cell service or whatever so they can always call for help. And that's never been a concern of yours either. Not necessarily. It's more about do I want cell service that night so I can, you know, check if I just uploaded a video, for <laughs> yeah. instance. I want to check my comments. Yep. So I'm going to stay in cell service that night, right? <laughs> I do the same. It's like, oh, I don't want to go out of cell service. And then other times I think, okay, I'm just going to... It'd be okay to be out of cell service. I'll just watch Netflix this night or something, you know. <laughs> and I do know that you have quite a group of people that live in their vans or RVs that you happen to know mm -hmm. on the island as well. So you can always reach out to them type of oh, thing. Oh, yeah, for sure, for awesome. sure. Yeah. So I don't want to take up too much of your time on this. I do want to thank you because there's a lot of people that are concerns, questions, the whole nine yards about do I start it, should I start it, how yeah. dangerous is it, is it? What are the downfalls in winter and summer? Because winter is a different ball game. You can always put more layers on to warm up, but you can only do so much to get cold. Down. Yeah, the summer heat, like, it, it, yeah, 40 degrees in the van is too hot. <laughs> so I can't wait to do an awesome tour of your rig. 
I'm excited about the tour. It's an awesome setup. So guys, I want to thank you for watching this video. I want to thank you for having us in this video to tell us about some of the dangers, if there are any, which you don't have too many of. Yeah. So you're lucky, <laughs> um, which is awesome. And we are going to be doing a van tour of this amazing van. And I'm excited. So if you like videos like this, please smash that thumbs up. As Marcy would normally say, don't forget to subscribe and ding that notification bell so you'll be notified as soon as the tour comes on. Yeah. I'm excited. And you're going to put the name of my channel. And the name of your channel is going right in the comments. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> you got to see some of the stuff on there. And you're about to see that <laughs> in the next video, guys. Come we will see you very soon.